My name is Tarmac, and this is your Game Industry News Wrap-Up for the week of April 30th, 2016. Bethesda is developing their own Steam Uplay Origin Battle.net launcher. I'm kind of excited to add yet another sequestered shortcut into my folder of launchers that I use once every four to five months. If it works as well as other Bethesda titles do, I'm not so sure I'd put my payment details in there if I were you. Your credit card number might clip through the asterisks, hiding it from view. Star Wars Day, or May the 4th be with you, as everyone will be incessantly chanting all day long, will mark the launch of a four-hour free trial of Star Wars Battlefront on PC. Electronic Arts has been adding trials for more and more games through Origin, which is a good thing to see happen. And with the dwindling numbers Battlefront is seeing on PC, this can only be a good thing for the community. In keeping up with the controversy of the Nostalrius private vanilla WoW server shut down by Blizzard, as it turns out, the Nostalrius team will be meeting with Mike Morheim at the Blizzard campus to discuss the potential future of the server. Whether anything comes of it, we won't know until later, but at least they're persistent, unlike their world right now. Creative Assembly, developers of the Total War Warhammer game, have backpedaled on their plan to introduce the Chaos Warriors DLC as a pre-order bonus. Fans of the Warhammer universe were less than pleased by the notion that such a major piece of the game was being gated behind pre-orders and made their displeasure known through just shy of 50,000 dislikes on the announcement trailer for the DLC. It will now be a free DLC release. It actually has a worse like-to-dislike ratio than the new Ghostbusters trailer, and that's saying something because the Ghostbusters trailer has the most dislikes of any video on YouTube. Blizzard has launched the Whispers of the Old Gods card expansion for Hearthstone. This addition to the game includes 134 new cards. They start you off with three packs for launching the game after the expansion, five more for winning two games, and another five for winning seven more games. So really, Blizzard Entertainment is like a crack dealer. According to rumors and a leaked game listing in the trending section of the PlayStation Store, the next Call of Duty game is titled Infinite Warfare. While there aren't any official announcements, this information does seem pretty solid at this point. My question is this, once you do a game called Infinite Warfare, how do you do a follow-up if it's infinite? Though I suppose Square Enix did set a precedent with Final Fantasy II. Star Fox Zero has been released and thus far has met with a stunningly low 69 rating on Metacritic when aggregating more than 60 separate critic scores together. This is uncharacteristically bad for Nintendo and with the complaints of bad controls, lackluster gameplay, a clunky camera and the now infamous chicken walker sections, it's easy to see why the game wasn't that great. I'm all for innovation, but in this case it seems like Nintendo innovated for the sake of innovating. Not the best reason to change things. For those who are looking for a sleep aid, consolidated financial statements are often a good choice of bedtime reading. However, reading over the Nintendo financials released recently, a surprise was found indicating that the NX gaming platform is due for launch around the world in March of 2017. This is the kind of vindication people like me get after pouring through hours and hours of boring text only to find an exciting nugget of information that becomes a flash in the pan as soon as the next No Man's Sky video that says nothing gets released and talked about on end for weeks at a time. In addition to this bit of news, Zelda Wii U will no longer be a Wii U exclusive and will be delayed to 2017 as well. Maybe the NX will have a launch title after all. Guile, flat top alumni extraordinaire, was added to the Street Fighter V roster on the 28th of April. Let that sink in for a moment. Guile, one of the most standard and dare I say beloved characters of the Street Fighter franchise, was not a launch character and didn't get added until more than two months after release. At this rate, the game should be a full complete product sometime next year. On the plus side, they had 4,000 entrants to EVO, so that justifies shafting the majority of Street Fighter players who don't play online. In news that surprised me about as well as seeing hundreds of children dressed as Elsa for Halloween, John Romero's Blackroom FPS Kickstarter was cancelled and will be put on hold in order to quote, do something that is right for the game, the team, and the community by relaunching when they have a demo ready. Given that Kickstarter backing slows down dramatically after the first few days, for most just like game releases, this cancellation couldn't have had anything to do with the Kickstarter not being on track to actually get funded or anything. Fancy that, people actually want to see more than just coffee house napkin ideas before putting money down on a project. Or maybe they saw some of those pledges vanish after Randy Pitchford supported the project. This has been your Game Industry News Wrap Up for the week of April 30th, 2016. I'm Tarmac. Thanks for watching.